is a, an introduction to a few functions. Before we get you to go through exercise sheet two, remember David spoke before about some tools or some steps that are going to help you with your programming of Metastock. The first one I think is probably one of the more important ones. Write down in English what you are trying to do. Write down in English. And if you can write it down in English, there's a very, very good chance you'll be able to program it into Metastock. But that's a really important step. The other thing Dave mentioned is to use that secret weapon. And this is what the secret weapon is. What we've done here with this particular uh, slide is we've taken a screenshot from the four major tools. You'll see in the top left, that's the indicator builder editor. The top right is from the explorer. The bottom left is in the system tester and the bottom right is the expert advisor. They're the four tools that we're going to use the programming language in, right? Whenever you're in a position to type in formula, whenever you're in a position to type in formula, you will see a functions button. Now, in each of those there, we have circled with a red circle the functions button. In each of those, there is a functions button. What that functions button allows you to do is to access all the functions that Metastock has. When you click on the functions button, this is what you'll see. The left hand side are all the categories of functions and the right hand side will show you all the functions from that particular category. Now let's go take this a step further. Let's go back into Metastock and what Dave's going to do is just go into perhaps the indicator builder and put ourselves in a position to type in code. So he's opened up a new indicator, he's in the formula box and because he's there and in a position to type in formula, the functions button becomes available. He clicks on that and he sees what we just saw before. Now if he clicks on all up the top, we now in alphabetical order from A to Z have all the functions and you can see how many there are. And he hasn't even got to halfway yet. You can see how many functions are there. Let's pick out an example. Let's say you use the crossing function. We just spoke about that. If we weren't quite sure about the formula for the crossing function, but we know it exists, but not quite sure about it, Dave can go and find the cross and notice below there, it actually provides us the format. It provides us the syntax for the use of that function, just like we've shown you before. And there it is there, cross, open brackets, data array one, comma, data array two, close brackets. But better than that, the little box down the left hand, bottom left hand side, if you tick that, paste arguments and then press OK, it will take that syntax and place it right where your cursor was. Now allowing you to go and replace the words data array one with your use, your data array one. And then going to data array two, getting rid of that word and replacing it with what you want to see. You can do that with any function. So we've just mentioned eight, there are over 200. You can use, with any of those functions, you can use this particular feature. Very, very useful. Now, who knows all 200 of them? There'll be no hands go up here, no hands. And I'm, I'm talking, including David and myself. So, if we are stuck, if we're not quite sure, use the functions button. Use the functions button. Now, the moving average, do I put the periods first or the type? Oh, let, no, 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 just use the functions button and it will tell you which order to place them in. Very, very useful. And I'm getting a few nods here and getting the feeling that not, probably not many of you knew that that was available to you. Very, very handy.